Want to do some cocaine? Hey, cocaine is the one thing that Feige said is off limits. What about Bolivian marching powder? They know all the slang terms. They have a list. Even snowboarding? Even disco dust. White girl interrupter? Even force bump. Do you want to build a snowman? Yes! But I can't! So the Deadpool and Wolverine trailer dropped and it's got fans buzzing with excitement. The rumor mill is churning hard and fast with this one, with news of several cameos making the rounds. But exactly who is going to cameo in Deadpool and Wolverine? And will they stick around after, or will they become a one and done? Join me, dear viewer, as I dive back into the dumpster fire that is Disney's Marvel. As we all know, Disney's Marvel is in a sorry state. 2023 saw some of the biggest flops not only in the franchise, but in cinema history. The Marvels was just the icing on the cake. It seems that Disney and Marvel have been trying to chase this phantom audience that doesn't exist. Let's face facts, chicks by and large don't like comic book movies. There's exceptions, of course, but by and large they don't. Like sports, they tolerate them because guys like it. Although it doesn't seem like they're learning their lesson and Marvel simply won't give up courting a female audience that couldn't care any less for the derivative dribble that they've put out over the last few years. But it looks like they found their secret weapon. It's no secret that Taylor Swift is a worldwide phenomenon. So it looks like these rumors are indeed true and we will be seeing all the Swifties swoon over her portrayal of Dazzler. Now, if the producers go the same way as they did with Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, this might just be a big nothing burger. Taylor Swift might just join John Krasinski in the list of dumbest superhero deaths of all time. But who knows, if this movie does well, Disney may attribute it to the singer and cast her in her own standalone Dazzler movie, which would actually inevitably do very well given her legions of fans. But what other Easter eggs and cameos did the trailer show us? Well, at the very beginning of the trailer, we see a destroyed 20th century Fox sign lying in the sand. While this could be an FU aimed at legacy characters, it could also mean saying goodbye to the Fox universe of mutants as they transition into the MCU somehow. Another little thing I noticed was the Copperhead's neon sign. Now, there's been three different iterations of the Copperhead character in the Marvel Universe. Lawrence Chesney, who grew up reading about a fictional Pulp Fiction character named Copperhead, Arthur Reynolds, who was a co-worker of Chesney and stole his costume, and Davis Lawfers, who was the leader of the Serpent Squad, a fictional mercenary group. Now, that last iteration is the one that would make the most sense within a Deadpool movie. You know, the Merc with a Mouth. Anyway, that was a little Easter egg that everyone seemed to have missed. In the same scene in the trailer, we do see a signage for a storefront for Liefelds that pays homage to Deadpool's creator, Rob Liefeld. I thought this was pretty cool and maybe a clue for the audience that Marvel might shift to actually respecting the source material for once, other than in X-Men 97. I won't hold my breath though, but it's a nice thought to help me sleep at night. Most people though have been focusing on the whole bunch of characters in front of the skull of Giant Man, Ant-Man's other iteration. Zooming in, we see very clearly Azazel, the father of Nightcrawler in the comics, a more comic accurate Lady Deathstrike, Negasonic Teenage Warhead, and Daphne Keen's X-23, which might not be the X-23 from Logan, but another variant. Another one that some fans caught was Ben Affleck's iteration of Elektra. I wouldn't be surprised if Disney went for this cameo, since we haven't seen much of Jennifer Garner lately after her messy divorce from Ben Affleck. If they're really saying goodbye to the Fox universe, then Jennifer Garner's Elektra certainly makes sense and perhaps there's also a Serpent Society connection here since Copperhead was in Daredevil's rogues gallery in the 1970s. Will this movie save the Marvel Cinematic Universe? I would say no. As others, along with my man Jesse Grant, have said, it would take a solid five or six good movies in order to turn the ship around. Will it be a fun, entertaining movie? Well, from the trailer alone, I would say yes. It might even break a billion dollars just off the star power of Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman's Wolverine. And let's not forget Taylor Swift. I'm pretty sure it'll be a fun popcorn movie 
that most audiences will enjoy. It's too early to try to rip it apart as others have done. I, for one, am approaching this movie positively because it indeed looks like a fun one. But what do you guys think about all this? Did you catch any other Easter eggs and cameos? And what do you think about the ones I mentioned? Please do let me know down below in the comments. And as always, hit that like button, ring that notification bell, and smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one.